Good morning. My name is Wei Fu Wong, and uh, I actually used to uh, work with a company called Web of Science. <laughs> so that's kind of my background. And because of Web of Science, I know uh, Dave Kochako from Artifact, and uh, he introduced me to this blockchain conference. So it was great for me yesterday, listening a lot of interesting stuff, and uh, also giving me an opportunity to share with you what could that be as an opportunity looking at Asia. But of course, I have to remind you that I don't represent Asia, and you know it's a big place, okay? And I don't speak all the language there, uh, so it's a, it's a crazy place. Uh, <laughs> but definitely it's a fun place. Um, so I actually currently working with uh, IES Resort Consulting. It's actually a startup. Uh, part of the I group and uh, I group is actually is a regional company that represent some of these scientific journals like IEEE, ACS, you know, even products like Turnitin. I guess all this you are familiar with, uh, dealing with the research uh, librarians, university, and so on. So we kind in the middle of the uh, the business of this publishing, scientific publishing. So I wouldn't say I know a lot of stuff, but definitely we have some interesting experience to share with you. And hopefully that could help you a little bit on go to market with some of your interesting ideas, products, services. So happy to chat with you after this. Now, I know yesterday someone was mentioned something was like this, you need over metrification. I guess life is like this, you need KPI, ROI, you need all this kind of thing to drive performance, but sometimes it's a question become, are we too obsessive with that or are we trying to use it as a guideline? So I have a two set of data here. The one, and this is something I use a digital sign called Dimensions. Some of you are probably familiar that um, in Asia, we are all quite crazy with uh, web of signs, scopers, that's our citation numbers. I guess the same, generally. <laughs> They like ranking, so a lot of uh, university ranking are based on citation. Um, but in this case, I'm using dimension because uh, I work quite closely with digital science uh, to some extent. So the one on the top, if you look at it, is a few country, uh, a project for the fine print, but the on top is Malaysia, Singapore, Israel, Turkey, Taiwan, South Korea, Australia, India, Japan, China. Of course, the orange color is the United States. So the one on the left here, let me see how to use this thing. Oh, this one is actually is simply the number of publication. Now, I don't think everyone would think that that is a good indicator or metrics, but until today, a lot of university are still talking about, hey guy, how many number of uh, paper you publish in IS ISI index journal? But then some researchers say, well, wait a minute, I'm not so good. I only care about the number of paper published in Scopus Index Journal. And then later on say, well, I'm not so great. How about Google Scholar Index? Yeah. All right. This is how people measure things. Now you know, that's not going to work very well. But in reality, we say a citation. And we all know that citation, since Eugene Garfield Day, is the currency of science. And that makes more sense because people respect and knowledge your work they start cite your world, then you look at the right side now, then all this number is going to be a little bit different. In fact, the, outstand, the right side is what we call field citation ratio, basically means the citation number per paper by specific discipline. And um, you start seeing the number is not going to be the same. Singapore, Israel, Australia, and United States have a pretty high numbers in terms of citation per, num per paper, and um, those countries that produce a lot of uh, paper like China and India, and suddenly they don't look so great. All right? Of course, there's a reason for that. Now, we, on the, the bottom here, we're actually looking at visibility. Now, visibility, we are kind of based on odd metrics. Some of you are probably familiar with that, and uh, Elsevier, they also have something called Plumax. They do it quite differently, but basically means that if you publish a paper, you should go out and you know, promote it online and get some visibility, Twitter, Facebook, and so on. 
And you can see that the visibility again consistently are those four countries. Singapore, Israel, Australia, and United States. So what does it mean? Well, you could publish a lot of paper, but if nobody even bothered to read it or download it, what is your chances of getting cited? Keep your finger crossed. Now, when I shared all these things earlier on, I guess it's so easy to count number because we base upon that count number to look at performance. But because it's so obsessive, I know, to the point that I wouldn't say that's kind of Asian behavior, but generally it, the behavior is like people become a factory, a factory of producing paper. Good or bad, doesn't matter. And then here comes the integrity issue. Now, every researcher in Asia I have spoken to, they say they are very busy because they need to do teaching, lecturing, administration, doing research. Honestly, it seems like there are a lot of things to do, but with all the kind of pressure, they start to mix up within so-called the, the plagiarism. Now, I sort of know a little bit about this because I involved with Tony in business quite a few years back in Asia. And something that's shocking me is that when I go around to talk to this university, they told me that they use Tony in as a, a QC checkpoint. They even came up something like all the researchers should not publish any paper with similarity uh, percentage more than 10%. I mean, what does it mean? Simply mean that uh, in Japan, a professor was sharing with me that their students are so creative, they actually become a lot of creative writing. You know how they do it? They use English, translate to Japanese, and then Japanese, they translate back to English. They just want to go around that system which created by turning in to reduce the similarity. Now, you know that that's not the way to use turning in, right? It's supposed to help you to check on, you know, there are certain similarity that you could look up with. You might mix it in the early day in your references and so on. I guess that's one thing. And the other thing, I guess we have to know that culturally Asia is quite different. Probably most of you know that. Not every Asian are comfortable coming here and speak. <laughs> They're all quiet, sit in the back. Sometimes I'm one of those guys. But the other thing is that the way we look at knowledge is that everything is universal. And as a result, sometimes we are not very sure when you need to acknowledge and not to acknowledge. I mean, it's changing. That's definitely. I mean, my children study in a high school in Singapore. They use turn it in. I was like, whoa, you guys use turn it in. They said, yeah. For what? I mean, for the project. And they need to recognize that how to acknowledge, you know, that sort of best practices. I think it's kind of coming out. And uh, that also have an implication what I want to do in the future. But the point here is that looking at the next generation of research in Asia, definitely they are more aware about some of the best practices uh, in research. And of course, when I talk about blockchain, I know you'll be surprised to say that Asia is not catching up with blockchain. That's not true, I know. It's a, it's a region that is so obsessive with technology. How many of you have gone to China so far? And uh, my advice to you is that now you go to China, make sure you have a mobile phone. I, let me share you one interesting story. I was in one of the campus. Uh, my colleague and my, uh, she is actually from Taiwan, so our phone doesn't re really work in China that well. We couldn't buy lunch because they say strictly you have to use that app to buy lunch and then we only have cash. And cash doesn't work in China sometimes. Um, but at the same time, I guess the point here is that, especially in the academic world, talking about citation and so on, I mean, they are so crazy with the numbers and stuff like that. You're bringing something new, not going to change their mind very easily. Look at a few countries, like in China, the research performance pretty much defined by what we call ESI, Essential Science Indicator. And that is actually one of the, uh, you know, so-called product from Web of Science. And seriously, you look at the document, the government document, they did mention specifically ESI. And that even become a background of the uh, China research uh, performance policy, they call it a double first class. That means they wish that by 2050, some of the university can have two departments become world class. And the criteria, one of those would be citation. Uh, plus many other countries as well. And uh, 
So my point here is that you could have a lot of new thought, new ideas, but thinking about changing it, accepting it, is still quite an effort. And I think you have to really understand the ecosystem here. Uh, Asia, primarily the funding, resource funding, still come from government, the taxpayer money. So you have to involve the funders, the university, and also the publishers, because you can't change the behavior that people not thinking about publishing their paper in a so-called high-impact factor journal. I mean, one of the big struggles faced by the university press is that they create a whole bunch of journal, but their best researchers don't publish in their own school. They still go to Elsevier and uh, Nature Spring, all those places. But I think the world is changing a bit slowly now. I think a lot of universities start to aware about impact and because, of course, they travel a lot, they see what happened in Europe, Australia, and other countries. And I can't borrow this slide from the Queensland, Australia, because I think they, I mean, people slowly understand that research is no longer just discovered, but you have to learn how to engage, improve your visibility, not like in the old day after you publish the paper and just wait for people to cite. And eventually, hopefully, you can connect to some kind of impact. Uh, some some university actually right now are pretty crazy with what they call it sustainable development goal, SDG, with something yeah, that uh, I think it just came from United Nations, and uh, even uh, time higher education ranking are using that. So what that means here, in summary, basically this is kind of my favorite on the hypothetical behavior of in the old day. The red line is citation. So when you first publish a paper, you know, waiting for the first citation count can be quite a, quite a wait, right? Six months could be very fast, but usually we are talking about a few years. Plus, plus all the peer review process and so on. So the advice now is that researchers need to start to promote their work. Now, I started doing this pretty much three years back, uh, the, the basically a lot of time in the early day, people say that I'm a researcher, I don't do marketing, I don't want to promote myself. People always think that I have put up a profile in the research gate, it should be good enough. And I have to explain to them and say, wait a minute, even if you have a nice profile in research gate, people don't cite your face, people cite your work, otherwise everybody have to go for a, what plastic surgery, right? If you watch some of the Korean movie. So, um, metric is actually slowly been uh, accepted because they know that it's important. But I think what excited me right now is that with the partnership with Artifact, the blockchain thing is uh, actually giving a chance to start talking about your work even before publication. And we see that this is really uh, game changing in terms of application. It's not really changing the way people do citation, but it's kind of like broaden it. Uh, becoming more transparency and uh, I think accessible and I think that's well aligned with open science. Primarily this is what I'm doing in Asia, I'm helping the researcher to convert their work into story, uh, be able to build you know, graphical abstract, plain language summary, using social media. Uh, one of the countries that always having a challenge is China because they don't use Facebook and Twitter and that explains why their odd metric count is always lower because it doesn't include those platforms used in China. And of course to understand all these artifacts and research output is publishing a paper. another education for a lot of researchers because they're so used to that publishing a paper is the end game but a lot of these things like uh, artifact evidences, if we want to capture it and we want to start promoting it, is something a big change of behavior. And a lot of things I feel not comfortable because they feel that those intellectual is not protected. But the blockchain primarily could help changing that. But again, it takes time. And without a blockchain, definitely we know the problem. It takes a longer time to get citation. There's a lot of things that become invisible accept the publication. Now, if we do the blockchain thing, it definitely accelerate a lot of uh, uh, visibility that of some of the researcher. I think so far my experience, it works well with ECR, early career researchers. For someone been in the research for like decade, 
it's kind of difficult to change. <laughs> so I see that the next generation coming in Asia will be a good place to work with. So what will be the plan looks like at the moment? I'm kind of identify some institutional to advocate about broad chain, open science. Uh, we have some uh, example in Taiwan and a few countries. Uh, of course, it's important that we work with them to understand the proof of assist, uh, existence. And last but not least, uh, kind of working a few projects at the moment. Hopefully, uh, they could have a better knowledge. So I thought this could be something that uh, you share with you that what we're doing in Asia and uh, if anything that you're working on and feel that can come along with that nicely, more than happy to have a chat. Thank you. Thanks for your presentation. Thank you. um, just I don't understand what does blockchain does better than a traditional um, preprint server in uh, in promoting your science at France? Well, a lot of research we have spoken to is that they feel that if they don't publish their work, they would not be feel comfortable to start sharing, and they worry that people will steal the idea. So the whole idea of blockchaining is actually giving them a confident level to do the mod sharing. Uh, of course, there are people start thinking about preprint because they also recognize that you, if you share your preprint in the early stage, uh, you can get a lot more uh, uh, visibility and citation later on. But um, we are even talking about something that not even be, even much before preprints. I mean, I'm not sure that answer your question. Mm. No, 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 okay, we could chat about that separately. Hi, Joe from, um, yeah, uh, I co-founded a funder print repository uh, for Africa, mm -hmm. uh, as a non-African, but with an African co-founder. Um, can you, you said you, that you don't want to represent the whole of Asia, obviously, both Asia and Africa are highly diverse um, continents. But could you kind of spend two, three sentences on why blockchain or alternative publishing methodologies can help de decentralize or democratize research and especially blockchain, how you see that can trigger a more kind of global um, balance discourse in science? Well, I think there's a couple of things we need to go through. At the moment, we have to really educate the researcher in Asia are more willing to start sharing, particularly you know, even after the publishing. I mean, you might be shocking to know that some publish, a researcher even say that, I like to publish because I have no choice, that's part of KPI. But even after that, they say, I'm not going to make the whole world know about it because uh, I worry people steal my idea. Now, agree or disagree, but that is kind of mentality, which sounds strange. But we heard quite a bit of that. Um, I think it's slowly changing. The people want to promote about that. But anything prior to publication, uh, definitely if we can in the form of a preprint, I guess they are all comfortable with that. Even a graph a poster, I think they are comfortable with that. I, I recently worked with a, a company called Morisa. I think there's a repository aggregating all the proceeding and, and poster. Uh, I mean, we are encouraging them to do that. Uh, but anything even before like data and this and other stuff, maybe it all depends on the discipline. In the medical, they are more comfortable, but in other research areas, they are still not sure what to do with that. Uh, of course, our so-called research promotion also includes social science and art and humanity, uh, which I think there's a lot of different behavior out there. All right, yep. thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh,